Hey folks, hello from Tomball, Texas. It's a little bit northwest of Houston. I'm out here and I'm working with some folks who serve local churches and local pastors. This is me and my Airbnb. If you're ever in Tomball and you need an Airbnb recommendation, I've got a perfect recommendation for you. Steve's been traveling. Uh, Steve's been going all over the place. He was in Tennessee most recently. There was the Shelbyville uh, Festival, the American Mule and Bluegrass Festival, and that was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm traveling this week. We should be back live next week, but be sure and keep watching your email for any updates. Uh, this week, we've got an awesome program uh, and you probably haven't seen it. Now, it's been viewed about 700 times on YouTube. Did, did you hear that ring right there? Just told me that that video is ready to watch. Uh, it's been viewed about 700 times on YouTube. It's a great program. It's a great show. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Go ahead, put your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather's like in the comment section. And during our next live broadcast, Steve and I are going to go through and look for any questions that have come through over the last several weeks, and we're going to get those questions answered for you. Thanks so much for being a part of the Mule and Donkey community. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and Steve every single week. It means a lot to us. We know you could be doing a lot of other things, and be sure and tell your friends. Send the link to this video to all your friends and say, hey, y'all better check this out now if you don't want to get yourself in a bunch of trouble. So thanks so much. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Linux, when are we going to get to see you on the YouTube? We set aside time every single Wednesday Dang. to watch you, and you haven't been on. When are you going to come back? Well, Steve, when are you going to come back? Uh, how about right now? That's right, folks. How about right now? Welcome back to Ask Steve, uh, a live mule and donkey clinic. My name is Dave. This is Steve Edwards. Every single Wednesday, barring a major holiday or some instances, I guess, a global pandemic, barring unforeseen uh, circumstances, we are here every Wednesday hanging out, spending time with you, uh, talking all about mules and donkeys. Um, it's very likely that this is your first time ever participating in this, and uh, we want to welcome you. We want to say that you're glad that we're glad that you're here. Of course, you know Steve Edwards. Uh, my face might be a little bit new. It's really not that important, but Steve and I have been working together uh, for well over a decade. Um, I know all the answers. I just need all of the understanding, right? So Steve makes sure that when I spout off what the answer is, that I actually have an understanding because those are two very, very different things. Matter of fact, Steve, when we were in Chino Valley, one of your clients did an incredible job of following all the instructions. And then you stepped up and said, now we're going to refine it. He had the information. You gave him the understanding. And that's what we're going to do here today. So how are you, Steve? Hi, Gally. I'm doing all right. My mules are plumb wore out after helping Santa Claus for Christmas. I'll bet they and, are. And pulling that sleigh all over the world. I didn't know there was that many good kids in the world, you know. So... <laughs> You know, it's amazing. You know, that's why I don't watch uh, the fake news anymore. I just don't, I don't even turn it on, you know. Uh, Newsmax, I do watch. But anyway, that's another whole story. And let's train some mules and donkeys. I'm ready. That's what we want to do. We are here to talk about mules and donkeys. Make sure that you get the training you need so you can give out there and give the training that that mule and donkey, mule or donkey needs. So um, the way things work here, it's actually really Quite simple. Uh, the way things work is uh, you are watching. Say hello. Put your name in the comment section, where you're watching from, and what the weather is like today. So, Steve, how is the weather out there on the ranch? Right now, it's a windy, cold bugger coming off the Superstition Mountains. Weather all white this morning, and now over the Montana Mountain area, it's solid white over there. But it was down around 34 degrees this morning when I was up at 5 o'clock. And, uh, and it wasn't bad at all. And, but this wind right now, it'll cut right through you. So I, uh, I've i been, as you know, Dave, I've been uh, fixing broken water lines and fencing. Uh, it ain't all just a matter of uh, sitting in the office and picking up the phone call and talking to folks, even though I get 50, 60 phone calls a day. But... 
you know, this, uh, this water line's around here about 25 years old now. And unfortunately, I've got some PVC where traffic's been going over a lot, so I've had to fix that. And then when the tractor broke down, I borrowed a friend's backhoe. It broke down. I had to fix it in order to be able to fix the water line. So, boy, I was under a lot of pressure. But we got it all. We're in good shape now. All we got to do is uh, uh, now, now what? Well, whatever comes along next. May, I was going to say maintain at this point. Uh, well, let's start seeing how other folks are doing. We've got uh, we got Cowboy Ken watching. Uh, hello, how are you folks coming in from Connecticut? We're doing Ken, we're doing good, Ken. Glad to have you here. Andrea is here. Hi guys, missed you all, Andrea. Uh, Steve, Andrea is talking about possibly coming out to the clinic. That's something that we got going on. First week, at, folks are always messaging, when can I come out to the ranch and spend some time with Steve and see the ranch? March. First weekend in March. That's when you do it. Of course, it's not an open to the public ranch. It is by private clinic only. And we are doing private instruction. It's a group instruction. Excuse me. We're doing group instruction the first month in March. And how many spaces do we have left, Steve? We have uh, right now four participants left. And uh, of course, it's going to be as many spectators as it needs to be. Uh, but we need to, you, you've got to get your ticket ahead of time so we can get head counts and this sort of thing for lunches uh, that my wife's going to be fixing. But uh, we've, we've pretty much, uh, by golly, we, we've got a lot of people coming in. We've got them coming in from Wyoming, California, Colorado, New Mexico, we do. Uh, Montana. Uh, they're coming in from all over. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. We're getting phone calls and emails just all the time. So, here we go. Yeah, folks are always wanting to know when can we come down. Well, that's the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the comment section to where you can sign up to come and be a spectator. You can watch. It's an incredible value. Um, you are not going to get a value like this for this price just about anywhere else. But more than that, you get to hang out with some good folks. Of course, Steve will be there. I'll be there. But you get to hang out with other like-minded mule and donkey folks. And that's where the real magic happens. Getting to learn from one another. Getting to yep. learn from each other's animals. So I'll put that in the comment section. But just hear me when I say, we want you there. If you are thinking about coming out, we would love to have you there. Of course, the participant spots are almost gone. I think there's only four left. And so if you want to bring out your animal, be a participant, get that hands-on instruction. Uh, it's a great value. We want you to do that, but we need you to do it quick. Uh, but that's all we're going to say there. Let's hop back and make sure that we say hello to everyone else. All right, then. Tony is watching from Victoria, Australia. Boom, right off the bat, we have gone international. Uh, let's see here. Rebecca is watching. Hello, Stephen Dave. Following from Raw and Rainy, North, North Carolina. Good to have you here. We got Nancy watching. Hi, I'm Nancy from Cooper Hill, Tennessee. 70 years. Just got my first mule. So glad to have found you to watch every week. We're going to give the glockenspiel for the first mule, too. We love hearing that. Uh, we've got <laughs> Beth watching. Hi. First time mule owner, glockenspiel. Uh, two weeks in, watching from central North Carolina and waiting for some snow tonight. Ooh, bring on the snow. Steve will send you some of his from up in Queen Valley. Yeah. Danny is watching from Brush Creek, Tennessee. It is raw and beginning to snow. Herman's watching. Hey, guys, glad to see you're back coming in from Arizona. Uh, Michelle is watching as correct exams at school in Montreal. We've got international again. Wendy is watching. Hello, Steve. Fiona is watching from Southwest Victoria, Australia. Wendy and cool international again. Look at this, Steve. We've taken She's it international awesome four mule. times. What's I that? Sent you, I sent you a picture of that mule. Was that her? Yeah, that's Fiona. That's yeah. great. What a good looking mule. huh? That's great. Oh, absolutely. I loved it. Um, uh, Jock is watching. Uh, from Placidas, New Mexico, ground is still covered with snow here. I'm 69 years old and just got my first mule. Annie, who seems to be adjusting well. Thank you, Jock. Appreciate that. Give you the glockenspiel there. Charlene is watching from Thornville, Ohio. Trace is watching, says, welcome back. Good eye, Steve and Dave from Lowood, Queensland, Australia. I've missed this live stream so much. Beautiful day here. Clear skies. Susan yeah. is watching. Hi, Stephen Dave from Arizona. Can't wait for that new saddle to get here tomorrow. 
We're excited for you. Yeah. That's awesome. And then Susan Henderson, Cloudy again. Cool in Western Pennsylvania. Mary's watching from Arkansas, 38 degrees. My mule Millie is coming along quite good. We love hearing that. Maybe you got that come along rope if she's coming along along real good. Hey, I want to mention something here. Susan Callahan. Yeah. I met her at Verde uh, Horse Days. I don't know what's it been, Susan, five years ago, maybe something like that. And she was riding this mule and the mule, good looking kind of a mule, but was just unhappy. Anyway, she she got one of my uh, trail light saddles. And like I said, I think it's about five years ago. Anyway, so she just caught, she just ordered an extreme uh, ultralight. And she said, I put your saddle on your, your, your trail light wasn't 10 minutes on advertisement on YouTube. Was it YouTube or Facebook? Facebook. And she says it was gone. Had people waiting in line for it because it was a, a, a used saddle, which is hard to find. But she got a good price. I'm not going to mention the price, but I'm going to tell you it was she got a really good price for it. Any uh, any uh, Steve Edwards saddle is a hot ticket item and they go very quickly. Of course, of course, folks message us all the time saying, do you have any use? And we just tell folks, hey, there, there's the, they keep their value so well that number yeah. one, they rarely ever come up used for sale. And number yeah. two, it's almost the same price as buying a brand new saddle. And so, no, yeah. we typically don't because there's just not enough inventory to keep on hand. And uh, the people who want them, they go out there, they find it maybe every now and again on Craigslist or eBay. Uh, but we do everything we can to give you the saddle that you want on the website, muleranch.com. Let's get to our first question of the day. A little bit of housekeeping there. Just saying hello to all of our friends. It's been some time. First question, this one comes from um, from Case. Case says, Steve, I watched your video at the Minnesota Zoo and it was amazing. I am just wondering if the same principle goes for bulls. I have raised these bulls since they were calves, but never haltered. Texas Longhorns and Scottish Highland mixed with uh, Hereford. They are big and never had anything around their neck. I am in Cocado, Minnesota. So what, what what's the thing in Minnesota that they're talking about? And then let's get an answer here. You know, Dave, it's been amazing what, how the Lord has blessed me with uh abilities to be able to train in this sort of thing and then hear from uh, different individuals and companies and other things that need help. Well, in Minnesota, the, the Minnesota uh, Zoo uh, in Minneapolis has a phenomenal uh, big horse program. And uh, I'm not sure if I sent you that video or not. One of my clients uh, sent me the video and said, dang, Steve, I didn't know you trained horses too. Well, I do lower my standards once in a while, you know, <laughs> not too often, but these big old Pertron horses were mucking out these uh, uh, handlers. And so the head veterinarian at the, at the Minnesota Zoo uh, had a mule, and I had told him how to do some, uh, quote, medical work. Um, to help him be able to control his mule while he was doing vaccinations and other things, you know. And that was the trick thing of learning how to use a twitch. And that's another story. But anyway, so he contacted me. The Minnesota Zoo hired me to come to Minnesota, and I trained on the horses. I trained on the the, uh, handlers and this sort of thing and put them together a safety program uh, for that. And... You know, Dave, we need to put that on there so folks can see that that come along hitch on this horse. Now, I'm literally, I'm 5'6", and I was standing underneath the nose of this horse, and it was still a foot above me. Just a phenomenal a per, a Pertron horse. And you can see I looked like I looked like a little stick doll next to this horse. But anyway, that's what I did. And, uh, and uh, that veterinarian... Uh, had contacted me simply because of what he was able to accomplish with his mule. He said, will it work with a horse? And I said, I wished I'd have been with mules before I did horses, because now I'm a better horseman. Before, I could bluff a horse through, but you can't bluff a mule through. So when you communicate correctly, Dave, it's amazing the, the, 
the assets you will have to get even a horse to understand what's going on. All right. Next question that we got, and of course, I think I forgot to mention this. Uh, we take all your questions. So if you've got a question, go ahead, put it in the comment section, and uh, we'll get to it. And make sure you share the broadcast. That's the three things we ask. Number one, introduce yourself, your name, where you're watching from, what the weather's like. Number two, ask any and every question. Uh, we'll get to it. And number three, we ask uh, that you share the broadcast. So let's get to the next one. Uh, this one we got emailed in. This one comes from Megan. Uh, Megan says, hi, Steve. Recently discovered some of your training video clips on YouTube. We hear that a lot. I appreciate your approach and how you explain the reasons behind everything that you do. Of course, that's, that's what we're all about. I have a couple of questions for you. I have a seven-year-old gelded donkey that I have had going on two years. I suspect he was mishandled, even possibly hit by previous owners. He has come a long way in trusting us, but I need to finish his training. Do your techniques work with damaged or rescue animals? Things like bumping his nose. I wonder if that will build respect or make him even more nervous and difficult to catch. Secondly, do you have any tips on how to get a nervous donkey to take oral meds uh, or worming? He hates when things taste bad and won't let me near his face after I've had to force him to take something. I want to earn his trust, but I also want to, him to learn respect. Thank you for your time. What would you say, Steve? Beat the crap out of that donkey. You know, <laughs> people going, what? Do what? All right, let me give you an example. Let me tell you, folks, don't sneak up on these equine. In other words, okay, Fluffy, it's okay. You just kicked me or you just bit me or you just did something, but that's okay. I'm going to pet you into respect. Folks, that is our way. That is not the equine way. Now, you hear me talk about ask, tell, demand. Where'd I get that? Where'd I get that? I got that from an equine. You watch the herd leader. Let's just give you a scenario. Here's the scenario. Here's this mare, and she has five or six other horses and mules and this sort of thing around her in the pasture. You bring home a brand new donkey, horse, whatever you want. You bring it. And man, that new donkey and horse mule comes running up and going, man, look at all my other buddies, mother equine buddies, here we are. Here I am, let's let's do things. And all of a sudden, the lead mare, she looks over and she pins her ears. She just asked that mule or donkey, don't come no closer. Hypothetical now, we're looking, this, this happens all the time. Well, this new horse, equine mule wants to come, he wants to visit. She just pinned her ears and said, I'm asking you not coming closer. He keeps coming. Now she pins her ears and she swishes her tail. She asks, now she's telling him. You all can tell the next step, I'm sure you can. The next step is demand. She will spin and kick, jump on him, pound him. Folks, I have literally seen the herd leader take a horse and just slam it to the ground and just I mean, whack on it. Serious. Oh, no, really? Yeah. Well, what, what happened after that? The horse got up and took off running. No, he didn't. You know what he did? When that mare turned around and walked off, that horse come licking his lips, ducking his head. Yes, ma'am, what would you like to have next? Kind of like I did, Dave, when I was a younger guy. Yeah. And my, and my dad said, you know what? You missed, you, you said the wrong thing to your mother. I got whacked. I, I, I learned some respect, you know, you know, because I got whacked. You know, I'm still good. I still love my dad. You know, passed away now. My mom passed away now. But that's okay. I still love them. Okay. That taught me respect. Folks, just because the donkey, the mule, the horse is a little, oh, ooh, like this, doesn't mean he's been beat on. Hmm. Okay, it doesn't, folks. It doesn't. Because, listen, their life is comfortable and uncomfortable. Get this in your mind. You, you cannot give them oats and pet them into submission. <coughs> Pardon me. 
you watch people who do that. I have seen this one trainer. She gets her, the feet out from here and gives them, and all these horses and mules are pounding her. You don't really see it because they take away the camera, but you can't do that. Listen, life is comfortable, uncomfortable. Get these two, get these five things in your mind. This is extremely important. Five things. It's all you need to learn how to get the basics of communication. The basics. Ask, tell, demand, comfortable, uncomfortable. That's their life. That's the way equine is. There has to be a herd leader. Oh, well, I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy a Shetland pony so my mule will have a pasture buddy. Don't do that. Don't do that. Listen, folks, here's what's going to happen. That pastor buddy is not you, the predator. It, that pastor buddy is another animal, an equine in this case. I've got people, Dave, that actually can't go anywhere without their pastor buddy because now their riding animal that they yeah. want to go for a ride and enjoy life yeah. goes bonkers because they get separated. Mm -hmm. So listen, if that donkey gets a sore nose and a come along hitch, that donkey did it to himself. If he would have paid attention and did what you like want him to do, you wouldn't have the problem. But here's the thing. You know what abuse is to me? Abuse is putting a nylon halter on that donkey. A nylon halter. Why is that? Because it teaches them to brace. It doesn't teach them respect. It teaches them they can do what they want to do. You think you're doing okay until one day old donkey says, I'm leaving. And then your donkey skiing back behind him. Right? That's one part. What's abuse to me? Using a horse bit in a donkey or mule's mouth or a snaffle bit. And he's seven years old. Listen, a snaffle bit can cut a tongue almost in two. I've seen it time and time again. I've had people bring me mules and donkeys that have been trained on by a horseman and horsemen tend to pull. They tend to bluff one through. They tend to push one through. I asked, well, I'm not gonna go into that. Uh, uh, anyway, here's, here's the thing. Abuse to me is using equipment and you're not getting anywhere with it, all right? So abuse to me is overfeeding. Put them out in a pasture, come on. You want them to get grass founder, put them out in a pasture, you know? So abuse to me is, is things that you folks aren't even thinking about. You're thinking about, he's been, oh, somebody hit Fluffy. Fluffy probably needed to be hit, you know? Somebody jerked on Fluffy. Fluffy probably needed to be jerked on. So there you are, you know? And, and you, you haven't heard me say this one time, I've said it a jillion times. You've got to command respect or you are going to be on the bottom of the pecking order. Period. So, so I, uh, I have not spent my life around equine. A lot of what I've learned from Steve, it's the first time I've ever heard anything about equine, you know, even animals for the most part. I just haven't spent a lot of time around the animals. And one of the biggest obstacles, mental obstacles uh, for me to get around was something that we understand between human to human, hopefully we do, uh, but I didn't get it between human and animal. And that is communication is different between a human and an animal than it is between a human and another human or a human and a dog or a human and a cat. And so when I was learning what Steve's talking about here, I, I'm thinking the same thing that somebody who, who would be green into the equine. You got to be kidding me. I would never do that to my dog. Yes. You would never do it to your dog. Look at the way that the dogs act in packs. Look at how they treat one another. Look at the way they interact with one another. Now, juxtaposition that to how equine act in a herd, how equine act and interact with one another. And there you will begin to learn the ask, tell, and demand. The asking is on the light end. The demanding that's where that lead mare will go after you and just tear you a new one. So what we are talking about here is we are not talking about, um, we are not talking about, hey, just be mean to animals. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is respect them, 
understand how they communicate and then communicate in the way that they receive communication. And the best news is in so many instances, all you'll have to wind up doing that. Not even that. You'll see yeah. Steve, if you come out to the clinic, you'll see Steve do this, have the come along rope that, and that's all it takes because you're communicating the way that they want. We could spend a whole lot of time on that, but we got a lot of friends who are hopping in. We're going to make sure to say hi to everyone. We've got, uh, let me make sure, uh, Sherman Johnson base. from North Oklahoma. The weather is sunny and 40 with a north wind. Marsha from Hondo, Texas, warm and sunny. David Hughes is watching, cool and rainy in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. We've got... Um, Tony, Tony says that she has sent a couple message about a rescue mule. Tony, I have not seen anything. It's possible that it slipped by me, but I want to make sure we get an answer. So you can ask it here, or if you want to uh, tell me where you sent it, we'll get you, we'll get you taken care of. Um, let's see. Jim from Alabama, 52 degrees, rain mist. Charlene is watching. My, my little mule is a TWH. Uh, Tennessee walking horse, Molly, about nine months old. So fun watching her grow. Got her as a six month old. That's fun. Marsha says, so far, no volume, probably poor signal on my end. Marsha, it might be back out. Close that browser or close the app on your phone. Open it back up and uh, hopefully you'll hear us loud and clear. Stephanie's watching from snowy Missouri, uh, snowy Montana. Uh, Sherry's watching from Mazo, Maine, 10 feet of snow and 21 degrees out. Ryan's here from Southern Wisconsin. Sagramore is here. I was fortunate to have an extremely compliant mule for my first mule. I want to buy another mule and would like to know what key points to look for other than temperament. Now, Steve, I'm going to send them resources. Give me the short points of, so you want to buy a mule. Just give me the short points because I'm going to send them the full resource. Okay. Temperament, 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 disposition, disposition. Number one total thing. Don't buy it for color. Don't buy it because it's had 15,000 hours on the side of a mountain. Don't buy it for that way. Buy it first disposition. All right. That's number one. Second thing is now we need to look at the confirmation. All right. Confirmation. What we're seeing a lot of right now. And I, I've, I've seen more with this year than I ever have, is a down hip mule. We're starting to breed really good. We're starting to breed to, to better animals with nicer hips, cleaner legs. So your quarter horse breeds are really coming out. Well, here's the downside, folks, of a quarter type horse is that they will put the hip in there and the hip is going to be higher than the wither. So now the saddle is running downhill. Now, Dave, I think we got some resources on that, some pictures and, and stuff like that. So so we're gonna go from, from disposition to confirmation, all right? The next thing we're going to be doing is I could care less if it's being ridden. Why do people just look at the riding aspects? Forget it. The riding aspects is the icing on the cake, but the cake has to be built. So here's the next part. We got the disposition. We got the confirmation. Here's the next thing. How healthy is this meal? How healthy? People call me all the time and they say, Steve, where's a good place to buy a meal? And I tell them, I don't know. I don't know. Why is that? Because I don't know the meal. I have not touched the meal and watched the meal. I don't know you, the writer. Because let me just give you an example. During my clinics, I will take and ride one of my mules and you will see me do all kinds of things with that mule and the mule respond and you can see that the training is there. Then I would say to you in the, in the, in the stands, hey, how many of you here have been riding 20 years? Hands fly up everywhere. Pick the person out and come down here and ride this mule. Everybody just saw this mule do everything I ask with ease. 15 minutes after a person has been riding my mule, it looked like it wasn't even trained. Why is that? Wait a minute. The mule was just ridden 15 minutes ago and did everything. Now we're blaming it on the mule because the mule is not doing well because we're not communicating correctly. Okay. Another lady in Pennsylvania, she comes to me and she says, 
I got this stubborn mule, stubborn just like my husband. Long story short, I ride this mule less than 20 minutes. And the mule's doing everything that I ask for, everything. She gets on it, the mule goes right back to the same thing. It wasn't the mule, it was her. So let's go back. Let's go back to this veterinarian. When, when you are looking at buying a mule, folks, don't look at how, many, how old it is, how pretty it is, how many hours it's been ridden, how much training it's had. You first look at that picture and say, all right, where's the saddle on that mule? If that saddle is sitting on top of the scapula and there's no rear cinch, don't buy the mule. If that mule doesn't have a rear cinch and doesn't have a breaching, don't buy the mule. Wait a minute, Steve. Why? 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 Why is that so important? Because when the saddle is not balanced and set up correctly with the breaching and the rear cinch, it's banging on the scapula. It's banging on the scapula. Okay. Now we got a veterinarian had written us a really nice uh, uh, email and note about one of my clients who had bought a mule, nice mule. Gentle, I mean, good confirmation, disposition, phenomenal, but he would buck you off. So he bought my saddle thinking we're going to fix this problem. It didn't fix the problem. What happened was when he would go down a hill or if the saddle was slight ahead just a little bit, it banged on the scapula. Once he found a veterinarian that could shoot a picture of the scapula, they found a little place, like a color flower looking place, on the scapula where the saddle had been banging and it crippled the mule. So every time the saddle hit, the mule blew up. Okay, why do I want to tell you don't buy it if it doesn't have a rear cinch? Don't buy it if it doesn't have a breaching? Don't buy it if the saddle is sitting on top of the scapula because of that right there. Folks, yeah. just because the mule looked good right there. Two or three years down the road, when the animal is tripping and is having problems, you're going to be going to the shoer. He's going to try to do his shoeing. It's not going to work. What the problem is, is the mule is damaged by the scapula. What we have here, Dave, and I, you, you folks have heard me talk about this, the equine world, the, the sales have gone down the tube in the horses. So a horse flesh right now is nickels and dimes. Where's the money? In the mules. So the horsemen that are making a living, and I don't blame them, you know, get in there. But, you know, let's think about the mule and let's think about the person buy it in the future. You cannot open a catalog on these auctions without seeing horsemen riding mules. How do I know? No rear cinch, no breaching. They tell you, oh, you don't have to have shoes on a mule. Are you kidding me? If you don't put shoes on your mule, you're going to get contracted heels. Another story. So going back, okay, what do I look for? Disposition, confirmation, vet check. Not only on the scapula, make sure they shoot pictures of the scapula, but the next thing is shoot pictures of that hoof and make sure that you don't have problems with the hooves as well. Because you can have ring bone because people have ridden them on hard ground and not being shot and trimmed properly. Anyway, you can go on and on and on. Yeah. Make sure you get a vet check. Okay. I put a link in the comment section. I put three actually. Um, one is to, so you want to buy a mule. It's an article that we've got. Number two is so you want to buy a mule. It's a paid instructional video worth yeah. its weight in gold. You don't want to be $15,000 into a mule and find out that it's a butt mule. You want to know what to look for. Steve's giving you the basics here but you need that refined education. That's what you're going to get in that instructional video. And then thirdly, uh, how to buy a mule on Craigslist or at auction. It's not what you think. Check out those three resources and you will be in good shape. Uh, Tony, her question was, uh, got a mule jealously nipping, just started, uh, just started with a female mule. How do I stop it? Okay, you said jealously nipping. Is that because there's another animal around and it's nipping at the animal or it's nipping at you? So we kind of need to know the circumstances behind that. Now, the next part is, why are you being within biting distance? Why aren't you standing at the shoulder where it's the most safest place? 
Because if they can nip at you, they, they can sure get you right there. So we have to find a reason. Now, it can also be a mare mule that's coming in season. And a lot of, and this is the wrong time of the year for that, but that's a possibility. So let's find out about that, Dave, uh, what the circumstances around the nipping. Yeah, and Tony, me- if, if you're still watching, go ahead and fill that in. We'll come back around to it. Um, let's see here. Uh, Let Craig is watching. The, the, What's that? Lady, let me touch on the lady that we had gotten into about the donkey. Okay. Where she, she couldn't give the meds and this sort of thing. Yeah. Folks, folks, when I'm training, I train for everything, you know, and one of the main things we have to do is we have to do vet care. Sooner or later, it's going to happen. Mules and donkeys care more about their nose than they do their mouth. So if you watch my videos on doctoring a meal, it basically teaches you how to create natural endorphins using my Twitch, okay? And uh, I don't know what kind of resources we got there, Dave. Maybe you can point them toward it. Yeah. You know, you can eventually learn how to handle this. And and at the clinic, Dave, I'm going to be twitching one. You know, I'm going to show people how to do it. You know, uh, it's going to be one of the things we're going to hit on. Yeah, so the humane twitch. I'm going to put a link in the uh, in the comment section. It looks barbaric. It is a wonderful, wonderful tool. This is exactly why you do not judge a book by its cover. You'll look at it, and uh, and the wise man will step back and say, "There's got to be a reason," and the fool will just make a judgment and miss everything. So I'll put a link to the humane twitch. And uh, come on out, join us first weekend in March. We've got spectator spots and we got participant spots. You will be amazed at how an animal who will not let you doctor, who will not let you perform any type of uh, care on him, will change like that when that humane twitch is being used correctly. The next question we've got here, this one's from Angel. Uh, Angel sends a message, says, I have watched almost all of your videos um, thank you for what you do. When you explain the things that you do, you do a great job of making them easy to understand why you're doing that particular thing at that time. I do have a question for you. I have a mule that I bought when she was four years old. Uh, green broke. I have only found two things that I cannot take care of. She will not let me touch her ears or her back legs without ropes to hold them up. Is there a video out there for these things? Yes. Come along hitch, folks. I cannot stress enough the come along hitch and using uh, the twitch. Okay. They're both an incredible tool. When you have a problem with an animal, and I know you're going to say, no, wait a minute, Steve. I just told you I can't touch the ears. We have a video for an ear shy mule. Okay. And, and they can be a booger. And you can see this little girl. She probably don't weigh 80 pounds soft and wet. See her go through the process. So uh, <clears throat> that's why I tell you, folks, you know, we're, we're, we're thinking, I bought this mule and I'm riding it. No, here's what you bought. You know, and, and I hear you riding it. You bought an accident looking for a place to happen. I have, I hear this green broke thing all the time. Here's what to me, what green broke is. I have a lot of places missing in my training. I want to go riding, so let's just ride. No, wait a minute. There's picking up the feet. If you can't pick up the feet, you don't ride. Why is that? What happens if one day you get on the side of a mountain and you've got to pick up a back foot in order to save your mule because he just stepped on a thorn or, you know, I've even seen people step on nails and stuff in the trails, and it's amazing. But anyway, what happens if you're, you're, 20 miles away from your truck and you can't pick up a back foot. Why did you put yourself in that position? Okay. Why? Because you're more interested in riding. And I understand, man, let's ride. Let's escape this world. I understand. But if you can't pick up the feet, you don't ride. If you can't touch the ears, you don't ride. Fix those things so that when you're out in the middle of nowhere, you are able to handle the situation, period, okay? There's lots of folks. I've got 32 broken bones and two replaced hips because I learned a little bit, most of it by the hard knocks, all right? So fix the problems. 
okay? The come along hitch and the twitch. Those two things right there, the twitch is going to help you touch the ears. The twitch is going to help you mess with the feet. The come along is going to help you with the ears. It's going to help you with the feet. You know why she's ear shy? Okay, I'll tell you why. That, that's the biggest thing that I have found is we're using the wrong techniques to put a bridle on. Every time you put a bridle on, always loosen it up two notches. Always. Always. Why is that? Because I don't want to pull on the horse wheel's mouth when I'm trying to put the bridle on. So I don't want to pull on the corner's mouth. No. Someone, yeah. those mules are calling. They're looking for some. Uh, they're looking for some uh, something to do, Steve. Yeah, well, unfortunately, that's a phone call, and I did this thing of, I didn't realize I'd hooked my phone up to my computer. Oh, Dave, you got to help me get rid of that. <laughs> that's happened to me too. It's not just you. I it's happened no to me. And idea. Get this. I will be at work. And my iPad will be at home and my phone at work will get a call and my wife will hear it ring on my iPad at home. She asked me, she goes, how do you turn that thing off? I said, I don't know. So one night, it was like a year ago, one night I spent time trying to figure out how to get it off and I got it taken care of. And I'm a tech guy. Yeah, I'm a tech guy. Yeah. Oh my. Okay, where were we? Were we so really interrupted? Well, we... Uh, we, we went to a lot of different places, um, but by and large, I think it comes down to you need, you need to be in control on the ground if you ever have any hope of being able to be in control when you're in the saddle. And being in control, it's a farce. It's not real. You can have strategic control, but if that animal's going to do what that animal wants to do, it's gone. So you yeah. need to be diligent on the ground, be that herd leader from when that animal wakes up to when that animal goes to bed. Uh, yeah. We've got, uh, and let's see, we've got uh, Linda watching a grateful howdy from my dad's funeral in Pennsylvania. Our heart goes out to you. So glad to see my mule friends ag again and missing my guy, Theo, the one-eyed mule back in Ohio. I'm sure he is missing you, but Theo is a good mule and he understands that a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. We're glad that you're here, Linda. Our hearts go out to you. Uh, Trace is watching. Uh, Albert is watching. We've got JR from Texas watching. Uh, put me on the send out list. JR, send me a message. Support at muleranch.com. That'll give me your email and I'll make sure you're on the list. Nadine is watching from New Hampshire. Ashley is watching from Clyburn, Tex Clyburn Texas. Jarrett's watching and says, any tips for getting a mule to lope on a left lead. He only lopes on a right. Real quick, what is loping? And then tips for getting loping on the left. Okay, left loper. So loping means we come, we're, we're not at a walk. We're not at a hard trot. We're going in a really nice canter is one name for it. Loping is another. So it's a nice, smooth ride, which you can move very fast with it. And it's very smooth, okay? So now... He's riding and he wants to go into what's called a lead, which means go to the right side, the right front goes out, or the left side, the left front goes out. So he says he can go in a right lead correctly. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, that's what he says. Okay. And, and it, it always fails, never fails. Okay. Left side, left lead. All right. So the left lead is coming out. Here's what people tend to do. They tend to not use what's called a lead departure. In other words, this. When I want to go out on a left lead, I have to pick the left shoulder up with my reins, pick it up, and then use my leg to move the hind quarter over. So I pick up my left rein, I used my left leg to push the right hip over and a drive off of the back hip, which then translates over to the front leg and off I go. All right. Now, why isn't it going into a left lead? Okay. Now, number one, when you are doing lead departures, going out on the left or a right lead, when you're doing a lead departure, 
that it's imperative that your mule, your donkey, all know how to side pass, turn on the forehand, turn on the hind quarters. They need to know that before they go into canters. Like I said, a lot of people do it what I call the backyard way. And that is they're walking, then they trot, and then they finally go into a lope. Okay? And that's that's hard on that horse, I mean on a mule, folks. Because here's what happens. That spine needs to look like this. And if you're trying to make them go on that lead, you're hollowing out the back, you're kicking the spine in the wrong place, and you're doing a lot of harm to your mule. That's the backyard way of getting them to go into it, all right? So how do you, you have to teach them to side pass, turn on the forehand, turn on the hindquarters before you can do a good lead departure because you have to be able to pick up on the shoulder with your left hand, you have to use your leg to push the hip over to get them to go in directly. So folks, it's not just a matter of going into a canter. It is what is physically and mentally better for your meal. Get this in your mind. We all say, oh, we don't want to hurt our meal. You just can't believe what you just did to your meal because you tried to trot him into a canter. Now let's go back. The one thing we have to think about is he's not going in that lead. You Maybe you don't have your communication correctly with a lead departure like I was talking about. Here's the biggest thing that happens, Dave. Here's the biggest thing. Even if they have, even if they have this correct, they don't have the rear cinch tight and the front cinch is too tight and the saddle is banging on the scapula, banging on the scapula. So what's happened? He's getting him, he's getting his leg all up underneath like this, trying to get away from that pressure. And then he'll try to reach out, that saddle bangs, and that hurts him again, so he can't go on the lead. Okay? So, folks, listen, anytime there's a problem, we go back and we try to find out where does it start. With the bridle, you're putting on the bridle and you got an ear shy problem. What happens? We put the bridle on too tight. Always loosen it up, let the bit hang down, take it off. Next day you put it on, they pick up the bit and carry it. You do not do harm to the mule. The reason that bridle, the reason he's ear shy, the biggest percentage of the time, you're banging on a corner of the mouth with the bridle because you want to get the bridle on. Think about the mule, folks. Think about the donkey. I've already been there, done that. I used to beat them. I used to spur them. I used to, it was, I'm thinking I'm doing it right because I'm a cowboy, right? Look, going back to this thing here, folks, if they're, if they're, if they're being hurt, they're going to find a way to try to tell you. Now, they can get real vicious, bite you and kick you, yada, yada, or they'll try to be really nice to you and just throw their head around. So, there's a lot of things we're going to be doing, Dave, at this clinic coming up. Folks are going to enjoy this. Yeah, folks are really going to enjoy the clinic. Um, they always do. We get rave reviews at the end of every clinic. Folks are just uh, – th- there's no shortage of words to explain exactly uh, what it is they're able to take away with. So if you're just joining um, – well, actually, if you are just joining, uh, welcome. My name is Dave. This is Steve Edwards. Every Wednesday – Starting now, we get together and talk mules and donkeys. And uh, early on in this uh, in this clinic, uh, we talked about a live and in-person clinic happening at Queen Valley Mule Ranch first weekend in March. There are only four participant spots left. Now, spectator spots are still available, but there are only four participant spots left. And those are the premium ones. Those are the ones that folks want. So I'll put a link in the comment section. We would love to have you come out and uh, be a participant. If you got concerns, want to make sure it's a good fit for you, give Steve a call. Uh, he'll be more than happy to talk with you. Um, uh, but uh, but yeah, uh, if if you're just joining us, uh, be sure put your name, where you're watching from, what the weather's like in the comment section. Uh, ask any questions uh, that you may have, and then share the broadcast. Uh, We've got Beth watching. Beth's got a question here. I spent most of my life with horses. Don't misunderstand that comment to mean that there is any particular 
level of competence at play here. I've just experienced horses, not mules. Two weeks in, it's clear mules are different creatures. Good for you. Uh, one thing that is shaking my confidence is that I don't see the tells that I'm used to seeing with horses. If my horse is agitated, I know the signs. I can adjust how long I have uh, and and how long I have to adjust the situation. If I'm at my mule's head, she can have an entirely different situation happening in the hind end than her front than her front end reports. Um, I'm not used to the stoic masking tells. Is there any language that I need to learn, Steve? Yeah, yeah, they're stoic, all right. Uh, you're thinking, am I getting through to you? Yes, you are. Maybe you're throwing too much. Uh, information at them, you know, uh, and you, you need to do it in small steps. You remember when you're working with a mule, you're working with a horse, a donkey, and then a mule. The poetry is when all three of them come together and things go through. But here's the thing. People train on these animals and they train on the horse side. They're not realizing that the donkey side, i.e. the stoic, or the one that's thinking deep as to what's going on, you see. So yes, uh, you got you got your work cut out for you. Uh, I, I don't know what training where you are in your training right now uh, in listening to you, but uh, we've got lots of resources for you, so you can go on YouTube and whatever, and you can learn a lot. You know. Yeah. Number one, they need the ground foundation starting kit. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's an essential. That's the come along rope rope halter and the problem mule video. Um, and Beth, uh, if, if you're new to us, um, which I'm trying to remember if I've seen you here before, if you have, and I'm not remembering correctly, I apologize. Um, it's, it's been a heck of the last couple months. Um, uh, but if you're new here, uh, we really don't tell people, Hey, you need to buy this. You need to buy that except for the ground foundation starting kit. Now folks will ask questions about product. And then of course we'll give them the truth. But when it comes to the ground foundation starting kit, we say you need to have one. If you do not have one, you are missing out and you are adding to your own frustration. Folks in here, as a matter of fact, if any folks in here right now have a ground foundation starting kit, rope halter, uh, adjustable rope halter and come along rope with the video, just put in the comment section for Beth. Tell her what a difference it has made. Folks will tell you, you don't even have to listen to me. Uh, but Beth, I recommend you get the ground foundation starting kit and then maybe reach out to Steve directly uh, you can send him a text and he can maybe point you in the direction of some additional videos. Uh, let's keep trucking along here because we've got a lot of folks. We've got a lot of questions and a little bit of time left. Uh, Myra is watching from uh, California. Good California. to see you, Myra. Jerry James is here from Indiana. Uh, Dale is watching. Seven-month-old donkey just started kicking as she walks away. She's sweet. Otherwise, what is the best training to reverse this? Okay, kicking when she walks away. So uh, let me get this in your mind. Are you taking off the halter and then the donkey walks off and then she starts kicking them? Is that what I'm hearing? Okay, here's what you don't want to do, folks. They don't leave first. You leave first. So I'm going through the gate. And this is a good scenario. I come through the gate and I turn and I look at the gate. That's the way out. I take off the halter nice and slow. And then I hold it on my donkey's neck or my mule's neck and I wait. And when they relax, I then slide it off and I leave first, they leave second. They never leave first. Here's what happens. Oh boy, I'm loose. I get to go. And they buck and kick and go taken off. Uh, no, 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 folks. You may end up being the result of being kicked in the face or someplace because they're just going to go have fun. Now, is the donkey kicking at you because they want you to be somewhere? That's a possibility. But if I'm hearing you right, you turn them loose, and now they're going off going, oh, boy, I'm having fun. Here I go. You know, so there's, there's a good scenario for you. Keep hanging out here. It all works together. You can't just say, okay, I did that. It all works together. Uh, Sandy is here. Glad you're back. Love the information. Thank you, Sandy. Charlene uh, and Beth are chatting back and forth. That's great. Um, let's see here. Hey, David Scholl is watching, which means, Steve, we have gone international again. All right. Get that glockenspiel going. Uh, let's see. David Hughes. 
Uh, my question is, is, is it illegal to float your mule's teeth? I've heard a vet say it was only allowed just like castrations. It's not illegal to do whatever you want to do with your mule. Okay. Castrating. I've never had a veterinarian license folks and I have castrated. Huh, yeah. A lot of animals, cattle, horses, donkeys, mules. Oh yeah. I've done that. So illegal. Uh, it's illegal if you're trying to do it for a business. And, and a particular state says you have to have a license. Yes and yes, okay? For instance, I have a very good friend who is an awesome dentist. He's got all the credentials. He even taught it and this sort of thing. But when he went to Minnesota, he did not have a license to do it in Minnesota. So you're going to find you're stepping on a lot of veterinarians uh, that's that's their cash cow. It's an easy deal to make a pretty good dollar on a on a on a tooth there. And I don't blame them. I mean, I, they did all that education and stuff. But if you want to float your own teeth, get her done. Okay, that's you doing it. But you going out and doing it for a living, and then you could get yourself in trouble. Here in Arizona, uh, I don't know of anything where that where you can't go and castrate your own and and do teeth and things like this. And I've done it for years for all kinds of clients and uh, never had a veterinarian's license or dentist, you know, just done it because that's a cowboy. Be informed, be educated, keep asking yeah. questions till you, you get go. the answers that you know you need to get. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, Sherman says, Steve, are you using the same ground foundation training for a pack animal as you use for a riding mule or should you train them for both? No, I... I use the identical same thing for a pack animal, for a driving animal, for anything. Listen, your ground communication is your most important training you can do anywhere. It's better than driving, it's better than riding, it's better than packing. Get the ground foundation crisp and clear to where when you ask for something, they respond. That's perfect. Yes, absolutely. Now, here's the thing about a pack meal, okay? You will need to tell that pack mule to be in a certain place, okay? And especially if he's a lead pack mule, where you and, and a lead pack mule doesn't mean he's smart. The first mule I've got here is the least knowledgeable of all of my mules. Now, I have five mules. I have my lead mule right here who is the least knowledgeable. He's learning from me. I'm using the come long hitch, go in and out. The second mule back behind him is the next most not knowledgeable. Not, knowledgeable mule and then my swing mules are my next two mules okay they got a lot of knowledge and then the the smartest brightest best one of all is in the tail okay that mule there has to be able to follow not jump over creeks not pull the other animals back he has to be well halter foundationed that yeah. okay so to give you an idea but yes, the ground communication, folks, Dave, I, I get a lot of people just buy the halter. That's all. Okay. And that's the second step. First step is the come along rope, folks. That halter can get you things done, but it's not the come along rope that can refine your, your communication skills. Uh, next question. This one's from Wayne. What should I be doing with an eight month old? I'm assuming he means mule or donkey and not a baby because. Yeah. <laughs> change the diapers yeah. yeah it's been a little uh, while since i've had an eight-year-old or eight-month-old it's been a, uh, been a minute since you've had one too uh yeah my son's 52 years old yeah <laughs> anyway uh uh so with the eight eight month old number one thing folks with all of your meals all your babies number one thing keep the feet balanced make sure they're rasp and they're balanced okay Keep them that way. They'll have they'll be straight up and down. Next thing, ground communication. Come along rope. Come along rope. Come along rope. Okay. I start my babies from the minute they come out of mama, and they're still in the in the sack. When we get that sack off of them and they're starting to stand, I will take some twine and put on them and just move their nose around. Let them start getting used to it because here's the thing: flight and fright. So. 
the ground communication kit for that baby is imperative. So make sure you get you you're trimming the the hooves every four to six weeks. Ground communication, tie them up very little, very little. Okay, and don't spend a lot of time. Sometimes just going to the gate, leading them out, making a circle, turn around and coming back is a lot. And then later on, build yourself a trail course, this sort of thing. But ground communication, that's your best thing. Awesome. Very good. Next question here. This one came from Gary. He emailed this in. I have a little mule named Cinnamon that I drive when she want, uh, that I drive when she wants to. Over the last couple of years, she's become barn sour or she will just stop and sull up until she's ready to go again. I do not know how old she is, guessing 15 to 20. Had her to, to Bishop two years ago. She was fine in the driving class until she got tired of it. Then she headed for the gate. But she is getting worse. She was coming in heat real frequent and trying to stay f and staying for quite a while. Vet gave her HCG injection and that resolved that. Did blood work on her a few months ago. It came back that she was ane anemia. Put their red cell pellets. She seems mm -hmm. to perk up. Took her to the town yard a couple of weeks ago, and she started out trotted fine, real nice, until she got tired of it again. I need help. Hope to hear from you, Gary. Okay, so Gary, uh, tell me about the bit that you're using. That's one. Next thing, tell me, did you start this meal under harness? Because here's what happens, folks, all the time. People started with blinders. Do not start them with blinders. Don't do that. Let them see a full 360 around and do your foundational training. Do your ground communication. Always start there. With any problems that there is out there, folks, I start with ground communication. Why is that? Because mules and donkeys care about their nose. And when you're doing ground communication with the come along hitch, you're teaching the, the mule's nose to go right or left. So ground communication. Next thing is sur single work. Lots of sur single work, you know, get them to bid up. Uh, most likely, if I should see a, a video of your mule, I'm going to say that the first thing I'm going to see, I'm going to see the nose sticking out and the head elevated. What's he doing? Because you're most likely using a smooth snaffle bit, he gets a hold of that bit and he sticks his nose out to protect himself. He elevates his head, tightens all five major neck muscles and throat latch, and he's got you. That, then if you decide you want to go somewhere, you can't do it, okay? Uh, we've got some videos on, on training. Uh, I, actually, one of them is, uh, is on donkeys, and, and uh, it's, you can apply the same thing to the mules, and it's called communicating with, your, with the lines, through the lines, and that would be a good help to you. Now, the next thing is when you're – I'm sure that when you're in a show, you're going to have a whip in your left or right hand while you're driving with your right hand. Or if you're driving direct rain too. So uh, I need a picture of your snaffle bit. Send it to my website, steve at muleranch.com. Uh, and, and, and answer those questions for me. See if we can't help you. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. Let's roll. Uh, try and get through as many of these as we can. Uh, Wendy says, our vet, uh, our, Wendy says, our vet tells us our Queen Valley Mule Ranch trained mule uh, is her favorite mule ever. These techniques really work and are easy on the animal too. That's great. And thank you, Wendy. Appreciate wow. that. Uh, just got a uh, uh, wind mule says just got back uh, to ride fan from ride Phantom Ranch, Grand Canyon. Excellent trip. Monroe. Uh, hello from Monroe, Georgia. Uh, a little follow up for Tony here. Uh, rescue mule. This was the one that was nipping rescue mule living with horses. Had a horse mare in the round yard, and I had my arm leaning on the trail on the railing. And Molly Mule, who was outside, other horses as she walked up and nipped me on the arm. So nipping her in that scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, basically, what she was doing was saying, "Get out of my space." Uh, is what she was doing. Now, if if I could have got a hold of that mule, I'd have been beating the, the sucker. I'm telling you, you get one that's going to bite you. They can get vicious, and I've literally seen them pick people up off the ground uh, from biting. So there, right there, folks, you will see me be livid on one. Uh, and and when, when you got uh, a bunch of animals together, they're looking to be the top of the pecking order. And they'll take the one that they feel needs to be on the bottom, start with them first, and you got bit. Uh, next question here. Um, let's see here. Uh, Paul, well, actually, we've got a few people chiming in. Uh, Polly's here. Roger's here. Linda's here. 
Uh, we've got Brenda from Wisconsin. Hey, Yolanda is here. International. The Netherlands are present. Yes. Uh, Linda gave us a great mule story. I'll share this real quick here. Uh, just a mule story to tell you how Theo spoils me. Uh, uh, Farrier came Farrier to came work on critters. on critters. He stands each animal in the same parking place near the barn door. After several me- horses get trimmed, Theo, the one-eyed mule, strolls in, backs himself into the parking place like an SUV, and gives the farrier a little nudge. Farrier says to him, is it your turn, fella? Theo nudges again, lifts up his front foot. Farrier says, I guess it's his turn. <laughs> that is the makings of a great book right there. Hey, good afternoon, Chaplain Steve and Dave. Captain Richard Matthews, it's good to have you here. There's my buddy. Yes, There's sir. Uh, Charlene, uh, Charlene and Linda are chatting. I love to see that. Uh, Yolanda's here. Laura is watching from Chile, Ohio, uh, or from Chile, Ohio, but relaxing in sunny Florida. I'll take that any day. Uh, yeah. Craig says, got to have the come along rope. Sandy says, ground foundation kit is the best. Ground work, ground work, Steve, is the best. Uh, We've got, uh, Linda says, I do have the ground foundation starting kit. It will give you so much confidence. Brenda says, the come along is a game changer. Uh, Sagramore says, got to check it out. Looking forward to next week's show. Uh, Tony says, I have the halter, but the knots have been adjusted incorrectly. Need to get it fixed. If they are tight, Tony, if it's our halter, uh, there may be some salvaging if it's not too uh, too tight, but if it's another halter that's old, uh, best bet, honestly, just get rid of it and spend the money to get a new one. It, you, the frustration that you're going to save alone is worth it, uh, but the time it it's just if it's if it's if they, these things are dry and they're knotted together, it's just not worth uh, uh, fussing with it. Uh, Ladonna's watching. Glad you guys are back. Uh, watching from Joplin, Missouri. Uh, Polly says, I used the come along hitch on the 12 year old mule I bought last February. She was terribly spoiled. She shaped up very quickly as I worked with her to get her to learn new, better manners. Just last month, she was the best ever. We have our groove now. There you go, Beth. So hopefully you're hearing this, Beth. You got to get that ground foundation starting kit. Uh, Let's see here. Linda, you are fantastic. Linda's just chatting with everyone and I love that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tony says, uh, I watched it, but the knots won't close up. Yeah. Uh, maybe talk, maybe talk to Steve, send him a, send him a picture of your, uh, of your halter and he'll be able to help you a little bit more. Myra says the ground foundation kit really made the communication with my strong willed Molly clear and effective without a lot of muscle. The come along is a great tool. Gosh, I'm going to have to get these on the website. This is good stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's, that's it. We got through all of them, Steve. So, Hey, how about, how about it? We had, uh, yeah. we had about 70 people all throughout, you know, coming and going, coming and joining, jo- uh, joining and leaving, but about Pat's here from Australia, Pat, you're catching us at the tail end, but I'll give you a clock and spiel. You've gone international. Uh, Steve, you excited yeah. for March, man? I can't wait March. Hey, and I'll, I'll tell you something I'm going to be doing, you know, uh, we got uh, some uh, coffee, uh, and it's called Come Along Coffee. And David Pingali uh, is, I'm going to have him send me uh, several bags of that Come Along Coffee. Folks, you got, I'm, I, I have to stress this, Dave, you want good coffee? This is fresh, fresh, fresh. So when you get it within w- within how long you, 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 you Postal Service gets it to you, should be within three days. You're going to have fresh coffee. And Dave, it is awesome, isn't it? Huh? It is great oh. stuff. It is it is, oh. uh, it is truly the coffee of the mule and donkey champion. Uh, folks, if you heard me talking about coming out to the ranch, I just put links in the comment section. Uh, come on out. We want to yes. see you. We want to meet you. We've had this relationship here uh, for the last couple of years of doing the live stream. I'll be there. Of course, Steve will be there. And, yeah. uh, but really the best thing is, is you'll get to meet some more of the folks who we've been interacting with here on Facebook and YouTube, get to meet them, uh, face to face. And that really is a game changer. Uh, it boosts your confidence. Uh, yep. it increases, uh, your level of familiarity with the community as a whole. And it just really makes, uh, for a good time to make new friends. Steve, how about we do this next week? I'm looking forward to it. And also I might mention Dave, uh, yeah. Uh, cowboy church i always do cowboy church at all my clinics everybody's welcome 
and uh, we're going to have the Broken Chair Band is going to be there uh, singing about uh, uh, about the Lord. And then uh, uh, I'm going. We got some other things coming up during that time frame too. But uh, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, uh, we're we're going to have some music. We're going to have a couple campfires going on. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And we've also got, Dave, yeah. this is in the future, future, future. Future, future. In Montana, we're going to be doing a four-day clinic. All right, folks. You heard four it. Days. Lots of things coming up. Four-day clinic. You got to get signed up for the March one. You cannot yeah. show up without a ticket. You've got to get signed up. And hey, yeah. you want to be signed up. Steve yeah. and Susan, they want to look forward to it. So get yeah. yourself signed up. Uh, go to muleranch.com. If you need anything, just give us a holler. All the information's on the website. Steve, we'll see you next week, all right? All right, buddy. We'll see you. Thanks, folks, for coming. Take care, everyone. Good to see you.